reality is this. I mean, this is uh, the Marcellus Shale is, is something that um, you know this industry hasn't seen in, in in 40 years. It's probably the biggest thing that we've seen as an industry in, in 40 years. You know, and it's that kind of an, it's an opportunity of of really transformative proportions. And nothing this big, uh, nothing this transformative has ever happened in the history of the world without picking up a few naysayers along the way. And I, I can appreciate that. And, and, and put, put aside the ideological components, put aside the, the, the competitors uh, that are fomenting some of this. I mean, there are people with legitimate concerns. And, you know, we, we shouldn't, just because we know that we've used this technology for 60 years and we've done it 1.1 million times, uh, that, you know, we, we, with, with, this, with a tremendous safety record, uh, that shouldn't be enough. I mean, we, we, we need to be able to recognize that the, you know, in, in their heart, these people have concern, and we need to address that in, in a way that's substantive, um, you know, emotional when, when necessary to talk about the jobs and the revenue and the opportunity, but also fact-based and substantive and, and packaged in a way that's understandable. So, um, you know, it, there's always going to be protests. I mean, the question is, are those protests actually local? Are they, are they uh, do those fears derive from, you know, legitimate concerns as it relates to trucks or noise or something that we can manage on the local level, or do you just flat out oppose, you know, energy? Do you flat out oppose the acquisition of, of fossil fuels, even if they're clean, even if they're reliable? Um, and if that's the case, then you have, you're making a political statement. You're, it's, it's, you, you're a different sort of worldview than 99% of the rest of the country, and, and you know, ultimately we're probably not going to reach you. Um, we're not, but, but one thing is that, you know, given the situation we are right now, uh, energy uh, demand potentially increasing 50% over the next 30 years. I mean, this energy got to come from somewhere, and the choices have got to be made. We have to have an adult conversation about where it's going to come from. And we, we, no energy uh, development, no energy resources without uh, without without uh, potential potential issues to be dealt with. You know, from wind farms, the, 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 the birds, the bats, the solar. I mean, they they, they, were, they need a lot of water for solar too. You know, uh, and then there's the costs associated with that as well. So. Um, financial cost, I mean. So, you know, we just have to have an adult conversation, put it all on the table, and have ch 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 uh, folks make their choice. I think they are. I think broadly they are, and it's not reflected in those pro protests downstairs. In the presentation, I laid out a plan, essentially, and it's not very sophisticated or, <laughs> or all that, um, uh, you know, novel, but it's essentially a, a plan that would allow for, you know, on the operator side, on the ground, you manage the local concerns. You handle the roads, the trucks, the noise, um, you know, uh, issues related to your workforce. I mean, that, that's, that's, you handle those and do them well, and they already are. You know, that's the good news. Look, the trade associations, we can come in and, and handle some of the, some of the, some of the, the uh, sort of the, the, the air force. We, you know, we'll come in there and help out on the, on the, in the air, take on some of the folks, uh, the MIGs, that are uh, coming after us uh, on, on the opposition side from, you know, and again, this stuff, a lot of it's fomented nationally um, and internationally. And so, um, you know, it's, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that and we'll, we'll engage those folks on, in the right way, the right tone with the right facts. Uh, but ultimately this is going to, this is issue is going to be won and lost on the ground. Twitter's nice, social media is nice, Facebook, Ustream, all this stuff's great. Um, but ultimately this, to win this, it's going to take an old fashioned trench to trench to trench campaign. It's got to be retail. And so the, the industry knows that and they're moving forward on it and we, we're, we're, we have the privilege of have trying to uh, be in a spot to help them. In the next 20 minutes, President Obama will go to Georgetown University and deliver a speech about the energy future. He's going to focus a lot on natural gas, and it's there's a reason for it. I mean, it's 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 the one it's like the wonder fuel. I mean, it, you could use it for anything, um, and of course, not only as an energy source but as a feedstock. I mean, manufacturers use natural gas as a feedstock, as a raw material in what they manufacture. Um, so, I mean, if we're talking about trying to get jobs back here, uh, trying to, you know, uh, build a back and manufacturing base, that's natural gas. We're trying to talk about, you know, uh, you know, taking care of seniors and, and uh, working class folks and low, lower income folks in terms of eating their homes and cooking their food and everything else that goes along with that. It's natural gas. You know, talk about jobs and, 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 and everything that goes along with that and the potential economic opportunities that surround the, the, literally the creation of tens of thousands of jobs, it's natural gas, you know, it's, and it's ours. It's, you know, I don't want to sound like Boone Biggins here, but it is, it's ours, it's right here. I mean, we, we don't need it from anywhere else. We can just, you know, we, we do, of course, get some from Canada, but, you know, it's, it's a resource that's here that we could produce, that we've we pioneered this technology. Um, and, 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 you know, we're blessed in this country. We have tremendous natural resources. It's why we are where we are, frankly. It's why we, have for, 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 for the last 150 years, have been the first-rate status nation that we are. Uh, now we have a lot more, there are more kids on the block these days, and we're, in, we're competing for the same resources. At least we were, you know, we were competing for the same oil, oil increasingly, increasing for the, increasingly for the same coal and other, other areas. Um, 
you know, the reality is right now that we can actually, you know, China's going all around the world looking for resources, anywhere they can find them, global scavenger hunt. You know, we have the opportunity here to produce here um, and, and you keep, the, keep the revenue and, the, and, and, and jobs and economic impact that derives from that activity here. Keep it here. You know, the whole outsourcing debate, it's here. It's ours. We can never outsource that. So I think it's an important uh, component and, uh, you know, one of those things where literally anything that comes up, it's an, it really the answer, the answer is, is, is natural gas. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, it's an interesting phenomenon, but it's increasingly true. You know, and the reality is that the fracturing process is, is over the course of the lifetime of a well, let's say it's 40 years developing natural gas. You know, we're talking about the drilling takes a couple weeks, three weeks, we'll say. The fracturing is, is, is a, the, the drilling, okay, so the drilling is happening, right? Drilling is done. Get the, get the rig off the scene. Next comes the completion crew. That's the fracturing crew. It takes like two days to fracture a well. You know, it, 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 I, I've seen fracturing jobs happen in under six hours and, and, then, and then on the, on the long end, probably three days to four days, okay? Um, and so the fracturing operation is done. You collect the water, now you, you produce the water, and then now you're ready to produce that resource. And so it's, 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 it is one of those things that industry looks at and scratches their head a little bit. Why so much attention to fracturing? It's one of this, it's such a short thing that we do um, in terms of temporality. Um, and, and, and over the course of a lifetime of well, it's a blip, you know, and, and part, part of the reason, of course, is it's, it's, it's the name, right? Hydraulic fracturing. I think it sounds, you mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it sounds, it's percussive. It yeah. sounds like, you know, you know, like you got an accident water skiing or something, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, part of it is that this, this notion that it's exempt from all these laws, when it's not, you know, when, when it, 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 it's, it's, covered, it's covered under the areas of the law that are relevant to the operation. Um, and, and so, and then you hear about Dick Cheney getting involved and Halliburton and the, the, that Halliburton H word, right? Halliburton. Yeah. So it's, it's unfortunately, there's a lot of smokes, there's a, there's a bit of a smoke screen around that particular yeah. issue. Um, but listen, and the reality is this, I mean, you have to manage the environmental impacts at these, at these, uh, at these sites. That means solid well construction, it means casing, two, three, four, five, whatever, you, you know, make sure that your casing's in place, yeah. that you have uh, redundant uh, layers as well, so that you, you're essentially forming, and with the cement, forming a bond, you know, forming a, forming uh, eliminating pathways of exposure, and if your well is constructed the right way, there's virtually there there just isn't any chance that okay. anything's going to happen. You know, it's it's when your well in construction is incorrect, or they're you're not letting the cement dry, or the casing structure is, is done in a way that's improper. You know, then you could have a potential for 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 problems. But keep in mind, I mean, U.S. U.S. has 492 thousand ish natural gas wells active today. You know, if this was this pandemic that everyone was everyone sort of views it to be now from the gas line folks and the rest, mm -hmm. do you, don't you think we would? I mean. Don't you think we would have figured this out? <laughs> wouldn't we? Wouldn't the first time we heard about this have been decades ago, as opposed to last year? You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. we've, the the truth is we we have a good environmental record, a solid one, and we've ma we've managed uh, you know the surface issues in, in a way that's as best we can. I mean, frankly, and working with regulators and obviously regulators sometimes coming down on us when 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 uh, things go wrong. So, you know, the reality is this: we want to be regulated. We want to be regulated under the most stringent rules uh, that make the most sense that allow for production to continue, but we also recognize the value that states play in that, in that discussion. States that have been doing this for, for decades um, and drawing on their intelligence, their expertise, and their resources to make sure that, you know, it's, it's, that we're able to put forward a credible case to the public that this is safe and that it's continuing to be safe as it's been since the 40s. There's only so much you can do on the public affairs side. I mean, I, I come from that. I, I've come to that conclusion, even being in that industry. You know, uh, the reality is that this is going to—we're going to succeed here because two things happen. One is that we continue to put the highest priority on world-class operations. Okay, going above and beyond in everything we do, and limiting the best we can the human human errors and everything else that do happen when humans are involved. Unfor you know, fortunately or unfortunately, humans are part of this thing. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're always going to be part of this. That's how we create jobs. Um, you know, and, and there will be mistakes made, absolutely. And, and when there are mistakes made, there needs to be uh, recompense for folks that are affected, and there needs to be, uh, you know, the state regulators make sure that doesn't happen again or limit, limit the damage as they can. So, um, so basically, high standards on the operations side. That has to continue. And then the other thing is, you know, as long as we continue to do that, we're going to continue to generate jobs, gangbusters. I mean, there's going to be jobs all over the place. If people tied to this industry, revenue get sent back to Harrisburg or, or uh, you know, or Washington or wherever. I mean, the state, local, all, all this stuff, you know. Um, and, and I think what you'll see is the way out of this thing is being, you know, it, it's, I'm sure the same, 
the steel folks were asking themselves the same thing 150 years ago, right? I mean, what's the way out? I mean, we, you know, we have a steel plant, and we, we, need, we need chemicals at a steel plant, and oh my gosh, we, there is a discharge into water and it, right, right next to the steel plant. How do we manage the situation? The, re, the answer is you do it the right way, you go above and beyond, and you continue to do for your community what it wants you to do, which is create jobs and, and be a good, a, a good neighbor, essentially. And so that's, that's what's going to have to happen. We'll help them out on the public affairs side best we can, but ultimately the, the way forward here is a substantive one. It's not, it's not a messaged one. You know?